1992, the beginning of a new era. What a treat. 1992 was an outstanding vintage year for computer games. PCs had now firmly imposed themselves in homes, and although they still called themselves IBM compatible, it was becoming more and more obvious that references to a single brand or format was a concept of the past. This was the end of a 15-year uncertainty about which computer system would take over the others. Whereas Atari and Amiga computers were still present in many homes, Atari were selling their last models by now, and Amiga would do the same a few years later. Yet great games were still developed for them, as we'll see in a moment. The Macintosh was the only real contender remaining against PC compatibles, which clearly represented the future with their open systems and technology. Games running under MS-DOS in 1992 were often proving better than the best ones for classical 16-bit computers of the 1980s. VGA 256 color graphics was already a standard configuration since a couple of years on PCs, and sound cards were also becoming commonplace. Prices had come down a long way, making good PCs affordable. This situation completely changed the market, and publishers understood the New Deal. The year before, some mega-hits like Lemmings were still developed for the Amiga first and only then ported to MS-DOS. In 1992, cases like this had become exceptional, and in yet another year, that was it. All large-budget games were now developed originally for PCs. And not only originally, but also exclusively in some cases. Games were now made for MS-DOS and nothing else. For this trend, 1992 was the pivotal year. It was kind of a silent revolution, but a very important one since it consecrated the advent of the PC for good. Both Ultima 7 and Ultima Underworld were released this year by Origin Systems. They are certainly the best in the entire Ultima series, and they became legendary titles. But a perhaps even more mythical title was released at the same time. Wolfenstein 3D. And here we have an interesting contest. Both Wolfenstein and Ultima Underworld were cited as the precursors for first-person action in a 3D environment. So which game actually launched the genre of real-time 3D first-person, which was soon to become and to remain the most popular one in the gaming industry? Let's have a closer look. Developed by ID Software and released in May 1992, Wolfenstein 3D is usually considered as the father of modern first-person shooters. Initially shareware, it quickly became a commercial success, gathering numerous awards and selling hundreds of thousands. It's now considered to be one of the greatest video games ever made. Even more so if we consider ID Software's next release the following year, the no less mythical Doom, which definitely popularized the FPS genre with 20 million people playing it in the first two years. If Wolfenstein was the precursor, Doom finished defining that genre and propelled it into the stratosphere in terms of audience. Yet contrary to a popular belief, Wolfenstein was not the first to introduce a real-time, full 3D first-person engine. Ultima Underworld was the very first one. It was sometimes said that ID Software's use of texture mapping in Wolfenstein was influenced by a demo of Ultima Underworld that could be seen the previous year during a computer show. But whatever the case in reality, it's not so relevant. Because anyway, the mere fact that Ultima Underworld was released in March, two months before Wolfenstein, makes it the pioneer for first-person 3D, real-time environment with texture mapping technology.
Its 3D engine was also ahead of Wolfenstein, as it allowed to look up and down. Its design combined concepts from earlier role-playing games, including Wizardry and, of course, Dungeon Master, which led the game's designers to call it a dungeon simulation. We'll have a dedicated video for most of the games mentioned in this one, so we'll not enter too much into details here. All you need to know that Underworld was an awesome game, not only because of its technical innovations, but also due to many other aspects, such as gameplay and scenario. Ace Magazine called Ultima Underworld the next true evolutionary step in the RPG genre. It noted that its simulation-style dungeon was frighteningly realistic and concluded, if you've got a PC, then you've got to have Ultima Underworld. The game sold nearly 500,000 units and was placed on numerous Hall of Fame lists. Tilt Magazine, a decade-long institution in France, broke its rule for the first and only time in 10 years by awarding the maximal score to this game, which it saw as perfect and revolutionary. Both Underworld and Wolfenstein initiated a new genre that influenced many games, the offspring of which is making the top of the charts today. To decide on the 1992 contest, rather than trying to determine which one launched the 3D first-person genre, it's more accurate to say that Underworld launched it in the world of RPGs, whereas Wolfenstein did the same in the FPS category. But these were not the only great computer games of this year. To follow up on the RPG topic, another significant game was published in the spring of 1992, Black Crypt. Interestingly, it was released exclusively on the Amiga, which proves that even at this time, developers and players on that machine were still legion. It was the first title developed by Raven Software, and obviously another clone of Dungeon Master, but its excellent plot, intuitive controls, and advanced technical features made it a rather unique experience. Black Crypt was widely acclaimed by the gaming press. Another groundbreaking release for the PC this year, Alone in the Dark. Developed by Infogrames, it was one of the very first to use dynamic polygonal characters over pre-rendered backgrounds, and it's considered as the father of 3D survival horror games, a breakthrough and influential title indeed. The player had to guide his character out of a haunted mansion by solving puzzles and fighting monsters. Due to its innovative technical features and to its exceptionally stressing environment, Alone in the Dark received great critical acclaim and won many prestigious awards. Computer Gaming World praised the game for its multiple viewpoints, noting that no previous game had caused the player to jump in fright at the slightest sound and described the game as a truly a diabolical simulation, rich in evil imaginings and unexpected twists. Epic, a starship simulation developed by Digital Image Design, was another proof that even so far as 1992, great games were still developed for the Atari ST and Amiga first, and only then ported to MS-DOS. It was a huge technical achievement on those machines, and a very interesting game to play. Magazines praised its fast 3D graphics and sense of scale. As for its soundtrack, I let you judge by yourself. An awesome title. This year was also released a sequel to the highly popular Indiana Jones Last Crusade, The Fate of Atlantis. Following a tradition of outstanding quality from Lucasfilm Games, this new Indiana Jones episode received universal acclaim from critics. Computer Gaming World named it as one of the year's best adventure games.
And last but not least, Ultima 7 The Black Gate was lauded as one of the best RPGs ever created. Richard Garriott later stated that Ultima 7 was the most masterfully executed of the Ultima series, a line he created over a decade ago. Again, we won't enter into details, but in short, the game introduced significant improvements over the previous episode, which was already exceptional. It was entirely mouse-driven. Its world interface was full screen. It had pop-up menus and it was running in real time. As for the plot and dialogues, as usual in Ultima, but even more here, they were absolutely fabulous. No wonder the game soon got an expansion, Forge of Virtue, and a spin-off, Serpent Isle. Also, it came in a richly designed package which included the magnificent cloth map and the metal runes. Ultima 7 was definitely a great milestone in the history of video games. As we can see, 1992 was particularly productive in quality games, but even more important, it opened a whole new era. It prefigured modern PC gaming. This video was about computer games, not consoles. These will have a dedicated focus in a subsequent release on this channel. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, see you soon, and in the meantime, have nice retro dreams.